Hey, it's Vicki, and today I am here to share my reading plans for January. I'm so excited to kick off my 2024 reading, and uh, like I mentioned in my last video, my reading goals video for 2024, I did mention that I have a bit of a life update happening that uh, is very exciting, but it's probably going to impact my reading, especially in these first couple of months as I get my bearings. So. My TBR sort of reflects that. I have scaled my TBR back, and for this TBR, I just have four books. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm ready to already start working on some of my goals for 2024, so let's dive in. So the first book that I'm gonna be reading in January, my first read of, well, I don't know if this will end up being my first read, <laughs> but, one of my first reads for 2024 is going to help me with the buzzword reading challenge for 2024. And for January, the buzzword is there, there, or there. So any of the theirs. And oddly enough, when I was looking through my physical TBR shelf, I didn't have any books that had any of the theirs on them. So I had to sort of seek out books and I came across this one and it is one that I'm intrigued by and I'm interested in reading and that is Out There Screaming by Jordan Peele. Well, it's edited by Jordan Peele. This is a anthology, a horror anthology and all the authors are black horror writers. And so I am a fan of Jordan Peele, uh, his movies. And so I'm interested in these. I think there's about 20 stories in here, I think. So I think my plan is going to be to maybe read a story a day until I finish it. Um, I'm not even sure who all is in here, uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll find a new horror author to check out. So I'm excited. Hopefully this is good. My next January read is going to help me already with my Revisit Remix, which is a project that I'm doing this year that uh, basically is I have a list of books that I told myself I have to read in 2024 or I have to unhaul them at the end of the year if they are not read. So one of the, this book is one of those books and it is called Once Upon a River by Diane Sutterfield. And this one is, I don't really know what this is classified as. I'm not sure if it's, if it's fantasy, if it's, magical realism because it seems like it does have some sort of magic or something to it because it is about this inn um i think in england somewhere where a bunch of people are gathered around one night they're just sitting around talking and having drinks and this guy comes in and he's carrying this little girl he's really injured i think and they think the little girl is dead and so hours pass or something and the girl ends up actually being alive. But when she wakes up, she can't speak. And so they're trying to figure out what happened to this little girl? Who is she? Where'd she come from? Why was she dead? Because they were very certain that she was dead. So why was she dead and now she's not dead? So it seems like there's some magic or something going on, but it also has a mystery element because you're trying to figure out who this little girl is and everything. So I don't know why, but this for some reason says winter to me in terms of like seasonality. I don't know if it takes place in winter. I have no idea. But for some reason I was like, this just sounds like a good January read. So I'm going to read it. Speaking of good January reads, my next read for January is one that I intentionally purchased on my Kindle and decided I was saving until the winter months because it was just the perfect winter book. And that is The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. And this one is about a writer who is staying in this abandoned farmhouse during a snowstorm. She's snowed in working on her new book and she's a true crime writer. And this particular farmhouse that she's staying in was the scene of a terrible murder or something decades before where these, you know, those, these murders occurred and I think a child went missing or something like that. And so she's staying in this house that obviously has some vibes and is there alone, snowed in, and then this little boy shows up outside. She sees him outside in the snow, brings him in, and is kind of trying to figure out who he is, why he's there, and she starts to realize some sinister things are going on. Maybe she's not as alone as she thought she was and all that kind of stuff. So it just sounds like the perfect book to read in the wintertime. 
Uh, I would love it if I could read this one during a snowstorm. Uh, we shall see. We have not had any snow in Michigan yet, which is really weird. Usually by Christmas, we've had at least one good storm and we haven't had anything. So as much as I hate to say it, it would be great for the aesthetics, <laughs> the winter book aesthetics, if we could get some snow in January, because then I will cuddle up and be reading that book and hopefully it'll be really good. And then my last read for January is one that sort of has winter vibes because the story in the past, anyway, takes place around Christmas time. So that book is Homecoming by Kate Morton. So this one is about, like I said, there is a story that takes place in the past in 1959 where this family was murdered on Christmas Eve. Terrible. It totally shook up the community and all of that. And in the present day, our main character, whose name is... Jess. She comes um, living, I think she's living in England, but she goes back to Australia to stay with her grandma, who I think is either had some sort of surgery or is ill or something, and she's going back there to take care of her. And she uncovers this true crime book that details that murder that happened in 1959. And then she somehow, I think, starts to see some sort of connection that her grandma has or had to that family. And she's trying to figure it all out. So it's a very typical Kate Morton book. I feel like all of her books do this and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Don't hate it at all. I really like her books even though they do tend to be on the longer side. This one is over 500 pages. They do tend to be longer and they do tend to be slow burns but I'm always super happy with how they turn out. So I have good high expectations for this one. I think it's going to be really good and I think it's just a good book to curl up with in the winter time and I'm looking forward to reading it. So I put four books on my TBR for January because um, Homecoming and Once Upon a River are both a little bit longer. This one's about 500 pages. This one's over 500 pages. Uh, and so I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it. Um, so if I get a chance to do another book, obviously, if I get through these and I can pick up a fifth book or a sixth book or a seventh book, then uh, I will do that. But I'm kind of trying these early parts of 2024 to keep my TBR modest, <laughs> not get out of control. So that is it. Those are my plans for the beginning of 2024. I would love to know what you guys are planning to read, how you're planning to kick off your reading year, because I would love to know that. And I guess that's it. So I hope you guys have a fabulous January and that the start of 2024 is great for you all. And I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching.